we've finally made it to the Northern Territory, a location that you folks at home have wanted us to visit for so long. This place is as vast as it is wild. Whilst we're here, our plan is to try and forge a brand new track out to the Gulf. This is one of the most spectacular places on earth. If you're into tough four-wheel driving and epic campsites, then this is the video for you. And I've also got cracking news too. Get 10% off store-wide at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter. That's 10% off winches, spotlights, and heaps more gear. Just keep an eye out for the exclusive discount code in this video. And of course, enjoy the adventure. Joining me on this trip is my old mate, Jamie the Boxer Hazelden. He's traveled a heck of a lot of this country, but he's never been up to the golf. And once again, He's driving his 2011 Land Rover Defender. Driving his beloved 60 series Land Cruiser, which is weighed down with enough fishing gear to sink a boat, is our editor, Sean Whale. Sean O's never been to the Gulf either, and he's been itching to start this trip for a very long time. We're right up in the heart of the Gulf country. Three hours out of Borroloola is a place called Lorella Springs Station. Look, from what I've been told and the research that I've done, there's a heck of a lot to see out here. G'day, mate, how are you? Yeah, good. Graham. Nice to finally meet you. Pleased to meet you, mate. Yeah. Hi, Rhett. Hello. How are you? Sean. Hi, Sean. Yeah, good to meet you. Rhett, how long have you been out here at Lorella? We moved here in 1987, my family did, and we tried to run cattle. I moved into tourism about 13 years ago. Since then, I can still say I haven't made any money. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely trying. Every year it gets busier and busier. But Lorella is so big, it's a million acre property. Million acres? Which is 4,000 square kilometres, which is bigger than a lot of countries. Yeah. So that's one reason we've got you out here, because I know very little about Lorella. I probably know more than any other person does, but I probably would be lucky to know 20% of the property, and that's including looking out at aeroplanes down on the ground. Where, where I'm wanting to send you out to, I'm positive that you would be the only vehicle that's ever reached that point. That's pretty cool, Rhett. <laughs> you might not say that after a few days of bush bashing, but <laughs> pretty much most of that is Lorella. You've come in up here, and you'll be traveling through, down through, up to this point here, and hopefully you're building a road right through up to the mouth of the river there. So that, all, that bit is all uncharted up through there? Mm, all of this part of Lorella is uncharted, so... <laughs> you reckon we'll get a few flat tyres or...? Yep. Yeah. Guarantee though? Eh? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Just spending a bit of a uh, quiet moment here going over the map and cross-referencing on the VMS. It's a real sense of adventure for me. This has never been done in a vehicle before and we are about to attempt it. To say I'm excited is an absolute understatement. We're going to camp at the homestead tonight and get started bright and early in the morning. I cannot wait. You know, you've just got to love this country, don't you? It really is stunning. Have a go at this sign here. I reckon this sign just about sums it all up. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, I'm so excited. Mate, it's going to be a cracker. I can't wait to get out there. It can sometimes be unnerving heading into such remote country as this and knowing that to survive, you only have what you've got packed in the back of your truck. We brought 50 big bottles of water per person. That's 525 litres of water. Remote survival is never to be taken lightly. According to Red, it's gonna take us about an hour to get to our start point where we're gonna push north into the bush. Now, what we're searching for is an old surveyor's line, which will take us in the direction we need to go Hopefully it's going to knock about three kilometres of hard driving off our trip before we have to start pushing into the scrub ourselves. What we're about to embark on is really starting to sink in. We're basically venturing where no other four-wheel drives have gone. I'm going to be able to cast a lure, hopefully catch a barramundi, where no other bloke has casted a lure, and that to me is what it's all about. Doing the Gulf is an epic trip for me. It's something I've always wanted to do because I love travelling in this country and I'm getting to see a place that no one else has seen. To be able to come out to somewhere that has literally never been explored by four-wheel drive before, this is probably one of the pinnacle things I've done. Pretty cool stuff, really, when you think about it. 
Ah, here we go guys, this looks exactly like what Rhett described to us. A bit of a creek crossing and then a whole bunch of white looking rocks. We are just about at the end of the main track guys. Oh yeah, I get you. Yeah, now you can see what he was talking about. Just like most bush directions, that was spot on. Hang about, hang about. What do you reckon? Up here, Sean o, Jamie? That's certainly a track and it fits the description. Right after the White Rocks, right after the river crossing, it's on the bend. The track continues off to the east, this continues north. That's us, boys. Mate, if the shoe fits. Well, we weren't expecting such a well used track, but we're certainly not complaining. Unfortunately, our luck didn't last long. This track is starting to thin out, isn't it? It's not as, uh, not as wide as it was. Yeah, guys, before it gets too much denser, I might pull over and quickly chuck that bash plate back on, and I've got to just quickly have a look underneath the vehicle. We take this chance to let our tyres down to 22 psi. I'm about to start putting the bash plate back on the 60 series. It'll probably give me a good chance to have a look right under the vehicle and make sure there's nothing loose, nothing vulnerable hanging down. Because the second we get off road into this tough stuff, any rock, tree root, branch, stump, it's just gonna rip those lines straight out. Now, the real adventure begins. Righto boys, let's go Pioneer Australia. Sounds like a plan. Gotta tell you, this feels pretty weird. Mate, we're straight into it. I tell you what, no track here. Hey, this is intense, I can't see anything. I'm really hoping it's gonna pop out and be clear soon. Of course, I think that might be wishful thinking, eh? <laughs> what on earth have we gotten ourselves into? Just wait, just wait, bud. Where's my saw? Well, we're down here underneath one of the crew cars. And the boys have managed to wedge a rather large, rather strong, and rather straight piece of wood between the exhaust and the front tail shaft here. No matter what we try, we cannot budge it. So Jamie has resorted to using a saw, hand saw, and a bit of muscle in an attempt to knock a piece off it. If we can do that, maybe we can whack it up higher. Just break the thing. That's the go. I'm looking. Yes! I think that needs to go back to four-wheel drive action HQ and be put... Another plaque on the wall. ...on Melanie's desk. How on earth are we going to keep this up for the next 27 kilometres? We've started seeing big river rocks around the place, so I decided to jump out and see if we're about to come across our first tributary that can help us stick due north. Well, I guess I should have known this is what I would find. It's a dry creek bed, that's pretty obvious, but what I was really looking for was, or what I was hoping for, was that it would be heck of a lot wider with some really defined, almost cleared banks on the side, so of course we could then follow them, make up a bit of progress. But that's not what we found. In fact, what we have found is a lot more vegetation down here. Now, we just need to keep following this. We can keep this on our right-hand side, can't get lost, simple as that. The negative is we've got so far to go, but it's all good, it's great fun. Mate, this is insane. I've never done this before, to be honest. I've never driven this sort of terrain. Yeah, mate, it is, it is. You've got to be on the ball. You've really got to concentrate more than you might think. I mean, I'm, I'm even hitting the ones that you aren't hitting because of the length of me. It's not often you get to say that you made your own track. We boys are making our own track. We're doing it. It won't be long before Rhett will open up this track to visiting four-wheel drivers and they could be following this very path we are creating. And just like Rhett predicted, we've got our first flat tyre. We'll take it off and have a look, eh? First blowout. So we'll see how many more we've got to go. It's getting late in the evening. I wonder if one of those branches went right through the tread, like the gap well, between the tread. I don't know which one it could have been. <laughs> Right. Get that one. Hey! Wow! It can happen to anyone but. Look at that, just on the inside of the vehicle. Stick must have just probably got caught in the sway bar or something like that. And just yeah. bang. Just reefed it. Quickest, easiest way, because it's getting late now, is we'll take the spare wheel off. We'll rip that tyre off maybe tomorrow. We'll put another tyre on that rim so that we can keep on going because this is going to happen a lot. Or hopefully it won't, but it, there's a good chance it will. The truth of it was that we had absolutely no idea what we were in for. Yeah, 
Every cloud's got a silver lining. When it comes to making your own track, the silver lining for us is being able to camp wherever the heck we want. <laughs> Getting a campfire lit is just about an essential part of any four-wheel drive trip. It's a part of the trip too that I really enjoy because I like using different methods to get a campfire going. I think it's pretty important that you build a bit of a skill set for when you're out in the bush. And one method I reckon is completely fail safe is to use the old cheap, tried and tested bit of flint. These things are fantastic for a number of different reasons. One, of course, they're completely waterproof, indestructible, they last an absolute lifetime, you can take them with you anywhere, but they've got a couple of other uses besides lighting a fire, which we'll get onto. Middle of the night, if you get lost, strike these things, you can be amazed how far you can see that. You can signal other people with it. You can also flash them in front of you as you're walking along if you don't have a torch and see where you're going. Just a couple of uses for these things. I keep them on my belt, always have them with me because they are so great to use. As for lighting a fire, there's two things you need to know if you're going to use a flint. The first thing is preparation. Get absolutely everything ready before you even start. That means getting your tinder ready and then moving up through your dry leaves and twigs up to your bigger stuff. So you've got everything at hand. The next thing to know is when you strike one of these things to start a fire, don't move your knife. Move the flint. That way you're not knocking your tinder bundle over. We had hoped to make it around nine kilometres today, a third of the way to the coast, but it's been so slow going that we've only travelled three k since the end of the surveyor's line. How about a cheers? Cheers, boys. Cheers. cheers. We are nowhere near our goal. <laughs> Not <laughs> even close. Absolutely nowhere near. It was near fun it. trying. Yeah. <laughs> Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with incredible deals on Adventure King's camping and outdoor gear. Take your camping experience to the next level with the amazing Grand Tour of Mark III aluminium rooftop tent. The rooftop tent that practically sets itself up. King's portable gazebos are built ultra strong with a tough steel frame, are easy to set up even by yourself and are available in multiple sizes for the campsite or the job site. The incredible new 270 degree freestanding awning can be set up in just 40 seconds and wraps around the side and the back of your car for incredible amounts of shelter. Hit the water on a King's inflatable stand-up paddleboard for an insane amount of fun at the beach, the river or the dam. But warning, it's highly addictive. Plus there's fridges, solar panels and more to make every adventure incredible. At Full Drive Supercenter, you get more for less. So you went for a walk down that creek there this morning? Yeah, I had a good look down there. Um, Went down probably about 800 metres. Oh yeah. It looks like you can drive a portion of that. And I was thinking it'd probably be better to cross earlier in the piece than wait till we get a few kilometres up because I don't know what's up there and it could just be a boggy mess. All right. Well, let's do that straight out of here, almost directly straight ahead. Yep. And then hook a bit of right. Yep. Cross the creek and get out of here. Bingo. Yep. All right. Let's do it. At some stage, we need to cross the creek that we've been following in order to head in a more westerly direction. Sean O reckons now is a good time to cross it, so that's what we're about to do. So this bush is pretty thick. We decided to swap the convoy order around to give both myself and Shorty a bit of a break. So now, Sean O's jumped up the front and the 60's taken the lead. He's the first one to drop off into the creek. The 60 handles like a tank at the best of times, but right now, for some reason, it's just not turning into the bank. Yeah, that bank is obviously far softer than we thought, and the rear wheels have just Ooh, uh. sunk. And that's not the only issue. Whoa, come and have a look at this. See what happened when I came down this bank is I've got the turning circle of a cruise ship. <laughs> As I went to go a bit of left hand down, yeah. it was basically straight on, and coming down that bank, it just went basically straight into this tree. I can't believe you've missed your intercooler yeah, by nice about that, that, that much. That is a lifeline. Yeah. Wow. That is just pure luck, to yeah. be honest. So if we can cut this yep. out of the way, I, you, I might even be able to drive out of this. 900 point turn, you might get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Let's give it a go. Jamie breaks out the old chainsaw and sets to work getting rid of that branch. Wow. That. Yeah. That was aimed for an intercooler, that That's, thing. Wow. Well, it's just nicked it. Look. Just touched it. Righto, that's that branch out of the way. Now it's time to see if Sean O can drive off under his own state. Shawno tries to drive out, but something's nah. obviously wrong. Mate, you got nothing up the front. Yeah. No drive at all. I think it's actually something broken. Yeah. In the front. It might have happened in the cape, it might have happened on the way out here, who knows. Alright, well I'll hook up a strap. We've got a group of trees over here. It's gonna be an ugly pull, but I don't think we've got any choice. 
just gonna have to do it. We made the decision to set Sean's winch up and winch him out of there. But we soon found we had another issue, and it was a pretty big one at that. We found out that Sean's winch isn't working. We, we're not sure what's happened with it, but he's got a broken CV by the looks of things. The winch isn't working, so what we're gonna do now is try winch him back up, and then we'll have to roll it down in here. Okay, winching. Just really gently, just track the crawl you through, and you're, you're gonna come, you're on a perfect line now to get out of here. Good one, Sean, oh, good one, mate. We're in the creek. Let's go to the coast. <laughs> to the coast. <laughs> This is a steep departure, and I will probably get my back hung up on. And I'll put the front locker in and drive out. This is like driving a highway. <laughs> Let's found a spot that looks like it might get us out of this river. Well, driving down the creek was supposed to save us time, but after that episode, it certainly hasn't. It's at least good to know, though, that we've now crossed this creek. We're still on track. We need to give it a little bit to get up there. We're well, doing three-wheel drive anyway. Graham, can you see how far I can come back? I shall be your eyes at the rear, mate. You can let me start by saying... You don't have a lot of room. Keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming, and... Stop! With the Defender being about twice as long as the 60, he needs a much wider approach angle. Come on, Jamie, give it the berries, buddy. I don't know what you two are whinging about. There's no problems at all. <laughs> oh, this is the toughest terrain I've ever driven in. We haven't done much today. We're coming up to 1.9 kilometres for the day so far. 1.9, how many hours have we been driving? <laughs> yeah, don't look at that. <laughs> well, it's about midday, about lunchtime now. That's not a lot, is it? Pretty confident we should hit that main Warrily Wanta River tonight. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? It'd be super nice. Have a nice bath down there. Well, maybe not have a bath, but it'd uh, be nice just to get a bit of water. As long as it all stays about this height, it's, it's not, not too bad to go through. It's a lot easier on the vehicles. My biggest concern though is if you look around, all this stuff's been burnt recently and that means super sharp sticks. So we're gonna have to be on the ball trying to avoid as much as we can. Oh, truth, did I just jinx us? You know, we've used Coopers and Mickey Thompsons on every action trip we've ever done. We've not one puncher and no other problems. Some might feel frustration experiencing tyre damage out here, but there's only so far you can push your gear. No tyres, honestly, no tyres would withstand this kind of terrain. We may as well be driving on a bed of nails out here. Yep. That's it. I think that's plugged, boys. Nice. Can you hear it? Tiniest, tiniest bit. Mm. But look, if I've got to fill it up every, every couple hour, of hours. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. At least sure. I, I've got a tyre. Just whacking a bit of fuel in shorty here. I'm really keeping a close eye on that fuel gauge because we've calculated for distance on this trip. Now, distance isn't that great, but as you've seen, I don't think I've ever driven slower in my life. What does that mean? Well, it means the truck's running for the vast majority of the day. And of course, if your truck's running for the, doesn't matter if you do five kilometers. If your truck's running all day, you're using a lot of diesel. Good to have a bit in reserve. Well, let's cross our fingers and hope I've got a bit in reserve. <laughs> Putting plugs in tires is not a speed game. And after about an hour, we're finally able to keep creeping forward. Once we got going again, there is a sudden change in the terrain and the crew patrol is now bogged. Well, one thing's for certain, my friend, we are not going that way. No. And that is pure evidence of the reason why not. It is as boggy as heck through there, but we don't want to go through that. No. Well, you can go through that. No, 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 no. Go for more. Righto, we managed to winch the crew car out and then alter our direction with a lot more northwest into it. That way, we're avoiding the swampy ground and continuing on hardened ground. I've dipped out. At the rear. Yeah, this wheel's completely off the ground. All right, I'll winch you back. I tell you what, these termite nests are a lot harder than they look. Righto, winching. Man, you were stuck on that. 
Either that or you weigh a ton. <laughs> Is that all? Just a ton? <laughs> Crikey. I've just become a long wheelbase thanks to you. <laughs> Stretch <laughs> trail <bit. laughs> Something you don't know, or you don't hear about too often about termites is that pound for pound, they contain more protein than red meat. Have a think about that if ever you're lost in the bush, because most people think that the only way they're gonna survive is by going out and killing the bigger animals and trying to eat those. That is remarkably difficult to do. These things, however, are everywhere. And whilst the squeamish might not like it, by eating these little termites, and there's one there, he's a bit unlucky, there's a bountiful supply of ready protein right here. And there's no problem eating those. They taste a little bit like a nut. And of course, there's always a bit of grit in there. But knowing facts like that could literally save your life out here in the bush. Termites, other little grubs, pound for pound contain more protein than red meat. Don't taste as good though, trust me. After a hard day's work, it's real easy to relax by the campfire. Those lamb cutlets are just sensational. That's if there's any left after Jamie's got to them. Jamie is taking the lead this morning, giving Shauno and I a well-earned break. Honestly, nothing, nothing at all could have prepared me for what we had to face. The sticks were just staking the tyres, one after another. It got to the stage where everybody was like holding their breath. We didn't know whose tyre was going to go down next. Hey guys, we've got another flat. You're okay. kidding. Another flat. We have done 621 metres today. Guys, that's a showstopper. That means yeah. we've got to put another tyre on another rim. That's going to take, well, it's going to take. take us a couple of hours in this heat. Middle of the day. Yeah, it's going to kill us. Okay. Well, if you guys could um, come back and give us a hand and bring the high lift, that'd be good. Copy that, Mel. On the way. Coming right up. So that's what we do. Shauno grabs his high lift jack, but after a quick discussion, we realise that it's about time to start conserving our spare tyres. We're down to three spares between Shorty and the two crew cars. We got to a certain point where we couldn't continue because we didn't have a single spare between us. And um, then the call was made, let's organise some new tyres. And we couldn't just magically get tyres out of the air. We used a sat phone, called Coopers, got them to organise some tyres to borrow Lawler. Like, that was going to take a week, but we knew that we were going to need them. So I made the call right then and there. No, thanks, Jeff. You're a champion, mate. No All right, mate. I'll speak to you. It was, it was hard work. When you're in 35 degree heat, you're in the middle of the densest bush you've ever seen. It takes its toll on you. With the 100 series running different size rims to the other, the decision is made to leave the Land Cruiser and go on without it. Four less tyres on the ground means four less chances of a flat. With the 100 being the crew's charging vehicle and storing a lot of the gear as well as Gav and Mel's luggage, this is a massive inconvenience, but if we want a chance of making it any further, we just have no choice. Jamie. Hey. How are you, mate? Good. Hey, buddy. We've come to have a power wheel. Yeah. We haven't got very far, have no, we? No, we haven't <laughs> got far at all. <laughs> Not at all. That's what we've come to talk about. Yeah. Camera car's down. Yeah. Um, it's reduced to one camera car. We're running out of spares at an alarming rate. Mm. We've still got to get back. Let's not forget that. Yeah, I know. The sun's going down. Yeah. We've made 600 and something metres today. That's nothing. No. Absolutely nothing. No. Now, we were trying to get to the creek last night and mm. we just didn't, but the creek is only... A couple of hundred metres. It's, it's nothing, over to our left. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Directly west, in fact, due west. For now... For now, let's go down to the, the creek, at least make a good camp. Mm -hmm. um, even see if this creek's actually got water in it. Well, it yeah. might not even have any water in it, yeah. Let's go down and find a camp near the yeah. creek. You know them termite mounds? Yeah. I'm sitting on top of one again. Oh, you hung up, are you? I'm diffed out. I've got a tree on one underneath the, the rear diff, and I've got an ant's nest on the front diff. Yeah, you're between a rock and a hard place. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, mate. Um, Do you want to just hook that winch up yeah, and I'll pull we'll you back? Winch it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on, fellas? Uh, he's hung up. You hung up? <laughs> All right, mate. Just gonna take up the slack on 12 volt. And winching. Jamie's truck is so heavy, it's a massive winch job, but I do manage to pull him back so we can drive around the termite mound. And on we go. Thank you. 
Hey, buddy. Yo. Your rear right is super low, mate. No, yeah, it's all right. What do you got there? Uh, this sensor tire. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I um, I monitor all my tire pressures at any given time, even my two spares. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, we fit them in vehicles all the time. JTS? Yeah, absolutely. Way to rock and roll. Yeah. Work on shorty? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, no, we can hook you up with one of them. No Sorry, worries mate. At I'll all. give you my address a bit later on. <laughs> <laughs> no drama. How about we push on through this scrub? Yeah, yeah. According to the VMS, we've been travelling parallel to a creek for a while now. For now though, we're going to stop going north and instead head due west to make camp at this river. Hopefully it's got water in it and it can give us a break from these harsh surroundings. We need time to think about what our next move is going to be. Jamie was leading the convoy and um, I heard those words that I, I never want to hear again because it broke my heart. He said, no. Nah. The creek's dry as a bone. You serious mate? Then Graham jumps on the radio and says, Hey, mate, according to the VMS, we've still got a little bit to go yet. This must just be a tributary. Oh, OK. All right, well, I'm, I'm going down. It's getting a bit rocky here. Roger. So with everything crossed, in the hope that this creek isn't a disappointment, we keep pushing north. And sure enough, there's this river. Wow. Something to die for, this river. Jamie took one glimpse of that river and was back to get his rods before Shauno and I had even made it there. I'm so excited, I can't even talk after days without seeing water. I'm really hoping this will be a place that we can catch a fish. <laughs> yeah. I was just so stoked. <laughs> Have a look at that, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that is insane. Oh wow. That'll do me. It's not worthwhile. That'll do me. <sighs> you beauty, this is so much more than any of us were hoping for. What a reward. Unbelievable. I don't even know what to say. I'm utterly knackered. I mean, it was pretty special getting to that river. Didn't take you long, Jamie. Mate, as soon as I saw that water, that was the end of it. What have I turned him into? <laughs> Rhett, the owner of Lorella Spring Station, has never seen this river there's a very good chance that we are the first white people here. As the sun went down, we fished to the very last minute before heading back up to the bank and clearing our campsite. Blokes should never play with fire. What a lethal combo. But I tell you what, I'm loving it. There's something about standing back and admiring what you've created. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with insane deals on King's DIY storage and 12 volt gear to build your dream four wheel drive. Whether it's an inverter you need to run 240 volt gear on the job site or the campsite, a battery box or a 12 volt control box to easily access your power, King's 12 volt DIY gear is what you need to take your 12 volt setup to the next level. Need a battery? King's has you covered with a full range of AGM, slimline and lithium batteries in sizes ranging from 98 amp hour to 200 amp hour. All built with ultra high quality components to go the distance. And of course you just can't beat King's solar panels and blankets to silently charge your batteries anytime the sun's out. At Four Wheel Drive Supercenter you get more for less. I slept on a stump, mate. <laughs> Did you? No, serious. Look at this. <laughs> I can imagine you would have felt that, eh? Met the middle of my swag was out of bounds. Well, that's the thing with camping. You never know what you're going to find under your bed. It's a Looks like an aeroplane. Looks like a piece yeah. of We're not letting this sensational river go to waste. Damien, put his coffee down. It's getting serious. <laughs> We're putting Jamie's tinny to good use and we're going to see what this sensational river has to offer. How lucky are we? How good's this? Hey, look at the water in it. Woohoo! Look at the snags. There is something magical about this river. 
just knowing that we are one of, if not the first people to travel on this river by boat is overwhelming. What a truly remarkable place. Oh, look at the jacks following my jacks everywhere. There's jacks everywhere. I've got to get a jack here. It's a little jack. It's the tiniest jack you've ever seen. It'll count. That's my first jack. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, Whoa. Crikey, look at that shark ever going in. Watch out, the teeth on these will be pretty angry. Everywhere you look, there is something to see along this river. It's just so full of life. Guys, how utterly pristine is this river? What more can you ask for? <laughs> well, a barramundi would be good. We head back to camp to have a meal, and it's pretty obvious that this is where our trip is going to have to end. Well, I've got to say, this has been one epic, crazy journey. It's just such a shame it's got to come to an end. I've got to say, it's been some of the most insane driving I've done, not so much because it was rough, but just because it's totally uncharted, just making your own track. Yeah. But no, it's been really worthwhile. But we, there's no way we could have continued. I reckon I almost limped into here yeah. in Shorty. I've got yeah. one flat tyre, one on the back's flat. That's the thing. That's why it's got to, you know, it's got to come to an end. Magic spot for it, though. Yeah, well, I'm not going to complain. We, no? can, we can muck around here for yeah. a couple of more days. You know what? It doesn't have to come to an end. What, a bit more fishing, you reckon? Well, definitely, but hear me out. Might sound a bit crazy, but what if we'll take the tinny right to the Gulf? <laughs> I don't know if I've got this, enough fuel for that. This little boat. This little boat. We pack our swags in. It's about 15 kilometres, maybe, maybe more. Heaps of water, swags, fishing gear, mm. and we get to the Gulf. I've always wanted to get to the Gulf. <laughs> you and me both. I don't want to yeah. stop now. How much fuel? You reckon you got enough fuel? Look. There's a good 40, 45 litres there, spare, plus what we got in there. Oh, oh heaps. heaps. We'll, yeah. we'll get there. Yeah. We went over our maps and put together a plan for the last leg. As it's already mid-morning, we decide our safest bet will be to wait out the rest of the day at camp and head out first light tomorrow morning. Um, there's a bit of a windy section through here, but if that is where we got to today, we'd get everyone up there, no problem at all. Mm. I need to spend some time plugging my spare tyre, but the other boys head up the river with the cast net. Whilst using the cast net to try and catch bait, Sean disturbs another inhabitant oh. of these waters. Oh. <laughs> that was a close call, Sean. This might only be a teenage croc, but it could still take a chunk out of your leg with not a worry in the world. Look at that. What's that? That's not it. That's my It's a shovel nose. Look at the. He's got a little remora. There we go. Really sensitive little nose structure here. You can see all the blood vessels coming into here and they just use that to snuffle around in the sand and pick up bits and pieces, little crustaceans and things. They're a beautiful fish. I absolutely love this time of day. Sun is just about over the horizon. Everything's cooled down, the water's calmed right down. It's a time for me just to take five, enjoy a quiet beer, have a bit of a look around and just reflect on the trip so far. Something of interest, just down here, there's a school of mangrove jack and they are just as inquisitive about me as I am about them. It says that this place has never really had any human impact at all. How about the croc the boys saw? Or a few of these lizards that we've been seeing that actually come out to have a look at us. This place is completely untouched, as it would have been for eternity. And that is really quite special. He didn't tell us at the time, but when Sean o ran from that croc today, he actually cut his feet up pretty bad on the rocks. Even the smallest cut gets infected so very quick. That happened mid-afternoon today and already, already Sean is having trouble walking on it. So this is going to hurt him a heck of a lot more than it's going to hurt me. Yeah. Yep. Don't when travelling bush, and thing. especially in a remote location like this, Hang in there. it's essential to carry a first Hang aid kit. Not only is it the only medical aid you'll have out here if so something goes seriously wrong, there? but we constantly use ours to treat bites, stings, pretty much everything. Did your feet don't smell so great? No. <laughs> We're up before the sun this morning. We're all keen to give this last attempt to make it out to the Gulf our absolute best. All I could think about was how hard we've worked to get to where we were right now. We've traveled such a long distance, we'd face such hardships, and it all come down to this, the final push to achieve our goal of making it to the Gulf. Everything depended on this last part of the journey. This is a special moment. There's a knot in my stomach for the unknown, for the things that could go wrong, and for what we could yet achieve. We are so close, yet so far from achieving our final goal. Taking a small little boat where 
crocodiles bigger than the boat exist is always going to be a pretty mean feat. But we didn't know what to expect. There's obviously no marine charts for this this river because no one's ever been in it in a boat. We didn't know what was around the next bend. You know, one bend might be nice deep water, next might be just gravel and rocks and all exposed reef and you'd have to get out and walk the boat across it. We've just bottomed out, so I'm going to have to jump in. Shano's going to keep a watch for sharks and crocs. I'm going to try and pull us into deeper water. It's a little disconcerting walking these waters when we know what inhabits them. As we saw yesterday, a croc can come up out of nowhere. And if you think they can move fast, you should see some of these sharks. And I think now's a good time to hop back in the boat. Can you tell us about um, what was running through your mind when you're having to walk through you know, shark infestation? I've got to say, I'm really proud of what we've achieved. This, for me, is something that I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. Well, you can go through that. No, 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 no. What's wrong with you? I've dipped out. It was a challenge to get up there. The tides dropped so low, we had to drag the boat through areas. We had to unload the boat to get up through to the gulf. But we done it. And what a reward it was at the end. Absolutely incredible. Only a couple of k's to go, boys. You beauty! I remember coming around one of the bends of this mangrove line creek and um, then we saw the coast. It was like a halo was around it and um, the sun was shining extra bright. I mean, we were so excited to see that coast. And I think we all even did a little high five and stuff in the boat, but that's just how excited we were. And as we got closer, we felt like everything had been worth it. We can't wait to get off the boat, have a few cars, yeah. <laughs> get some fish for lunch. Travelling around this countryside, this has got to be the most remote place I've ever been. We've started the journey in a car, we've ended the journey in a boat. Absolutely intense. We've made it. We've made it to the Gulf via a route that nobody has ever done before. <laughs> Who knows how many people have stood right where we are now. OK, you're probably wondering where the crew are right now. Well, we only have one tinny. The other three crew members are still back at camp. So with no time to waste, Jamie heads straight back down the river to get them. Shauna and I have no choice but to get stuck into fishing one of the most untouched, remote, isolated places on earth. No sooner had we thrown a lure in. This is Shauno's first barra, and what a way to open your account. That is an absolute cracker, but more importantly, this is lunch. What do you reckon, mate? That is about as good as it gets in my book. This is, this has made it worthwhile for me, I tell you what, Graham. Any bloke who fishes, will dream of catching a barra up in the top end. For Sean to be catching his first barra right at the Gulf of Carpentaria is something he'll remember for the rest of his life. <laughs> I got nothing. That's just sensational. Well, the hours passed and the others, they just still hadn't shown. Sean and I can't help but feel concerned. The water level was low enough when we'd come through. Hey, Shauno, just got a text message on the sat phone. Yeah. <laughs> water is really shallow because of receding tide. Don't know if we'll make it. Mal, that's pretty, it's pretty obvious. This was, this was, the water was right out here when we came out here. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty serious. Sean and I just couldn't offer any help to the guys. If the tides had dropped too far, and they couldn't make it all the way out to the Gulf, they'd either be sleeping in the tinny for the night or they'd have to make camp somewhere along the river. Eventually, six hours later, the rest of the crew turn up. That's got to be them. <laughs> they've made it. They've done it. Jeez, they've done it right. Very well, mate. Just in time, that sun's about to hit the horizon too. It has looked completely different from when Jamie, Jamie was there. Yeah, He oh, yeah. wouldn't recognise this. There's no water here anymore. No. <laughs> so glad they made it, though. The tide has dropped so far that they've got no choice but to land the tinny in the mud. It takes all of us to unload it and carry it back to the shore. Come on, come on, come on. Come on.
Wow, we are so exhausted, yet at the same time, utterly thrilled to be sitting here. Such a beautiful night in such a beautiful place. We'll sleep well tonight on the shores of the Gulf of Carpentaria. The next day makes all the hard work worthwhile though. This is like no place I've ever been before. It feels like we're at the end of the earth. You know, I just can't explain this feeling of achievement right now. This is something we'll all remember to the day we die. And it's an absolute honour to be standing right here with these people in one of the most remote parts of the world. If you ever make it out to Lorella, make sure you drive our track to the river. One day Rhett does plan to finish that track off and take you all the way out to the Gulf, but until then, if you've got a boat, put it in at the river and get out to the Gulf yourself. You won't be the first to do it, but I reckon you're going to love it anyway. Well, we've made it, and I tell you what, it feels bloody amazing. We pushed those vehicles of ours to the absolute limit to get to where we got, jumping in the tinny has then delivered us to here, one of the most remote places in the world. This is a place that few, if any, white people have seen. And I know for a fact that no one has accessed this via that river, and no one has come up through those tracks we came through. And for me, the rest of the crew and the boys, that really is an accomplishment, something I will remember for a very, very long time. Don't know if I'll ever get back out here again, but I do know I'll see you next time on Four Wheel Drive Action. <laughs> on a personal note, I'd like to say a massive thanks to Sean and Jamie for sharing this trip with me, but more so to my camera crew. These guys went well beyond the call of duty to produce the DVD you've just watched. Guys, we did something amazing out there. I'm proud of all of us. What a team, hey? What a team. A massive thanks must go out to Rhett Walker and his sons. Your visit to Lorella Springs Station doesn't have to be as intense as ours. It's a popular tourist spot for four-wheel drivers and caravanners alike, and with a million acres, you can entertain yourself here for months. I highly recommend it. Forget building your own set of storage drawers or paying well over $1,000 for a set elsewhere. And get your hands on a set of incredibly tough and unbeatable value for money, Titan Storage Drawers. Our entire range of Titan Storage Drawers have been built to handle just about anything you can throw at them. All models of Titan Double Drawers come with an included built-in fridge slide on the left-hand side, saving you up to $200 compared to some other brands that charge extra for a fridge slide. Each draw top also has these heavy-duty spring-loaded tie-down points to secure your gear on even the most corrugated roads. We've put them through their paces like none other. We've jumped on them, overloaded them with bricks, chucked an engine on the drawers at full extension, absolutely flooded them and used them off-road year after year to prove just how tough they are. The Titan 900 single drawer is perfect for those who have limited space to install a storage drawer. It has internal dimensions of 430 millimeters wide, 790 millimeters long, and 190 millimeters deep. The Titan 900 double drawer setup is ideal for smaller wagons like Prados, Pajeros, and SUVs with the internal dimensions identical to the 900 single drawer on each side. The Titan 1300 ute drawers are made specifically for vans and utes. The internal dimensions are 1200 millimeters long, 430 millimeters wide, and 150 millimeters high. The 1300 millimeter single drawers are also a cracking addition to the back of vans and utes. The internal dimensions are the same as the double 1300 drawers, but have an extra 40 millimeters of depth, making them 190 millimeters deep. And finally, for the bigger wagons like Land Cruisers and Patrols, the double 1070 storage drawers have internal dimensions of 880 millimeters long, 470 millimeters wide, and 180 millimeters of depth. They come 95% pre-assembled, and all you need to install them is a couple of basic hand tools and a couple of hours on a lazy Sunday Arvo. You can also add optional wing kits, both model specific and DIY. So you can finish off the back of your four wheel drive and have plenty of storage available for your next adventure. Take your setup to the next level with the incredibly tough and unbeatable value for money, Titan Storage Drawers. If you're after a next level 12 volt upgrade for your vehicle or your next camping trip, then check this out. The Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. This uses high capacity, brand new, grade A lithium iron phosphate cells, capable of thousands of cycles. It's paired with a high quality BMS, able to output up to 160 amps of current. The future of 12 volt setups is here. Lithium batteries are super lightweight and still have heaps of power capacity. 
In fact, this battery weighs just over 15 kilos. That's about half as much as a similar capacity AGM. But that's not all. Lithium batteries have the ability to use their entire capacity from 100 to 0% and still have an incredibly long life. The reason Adventure King's lithium batteries are so good is because they use lithium iron phosphate chemistry. That means if you're using the entire 120 amp hours of capacity in this battery every day, it would still last almost five and a half years. Some cheap lithium batteries use grade B or even secondhand cells to keep the cost down, but not here. Adventure King's lithium iron phosphate batteries use brand new grade A prismatic cells. When these batteries are assembled, each individual cell is matched with others and then grouped. Then those cells are balanced, which means that these batteries always function at their best and ensure you have full capacity. Another major feature of these Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium batteries is the high quality internal battery management system. This BMS for short takes care of the individual cells. It balances them while you're charging your battery. It prevents overcharge, over discharge, over temperature and short circuits. A high quality BMS is so important and it's also incredibly important to match the BMS to the cells and the use of the battery. A good indicator of a high quality BMS is to look for high current discharge and charge ratings. This battery is capable of charging and discharging constantly at up to 100 amps, and it can do a peak discharge of 160 amps of current. A high discharge current and a high peak discharge current are very important if you want to run things like inverters that need a lot of power when they turn on to fill the capacitors. If you're looking at a battery that has a much lower charge and discharge rate, they could be cost cutting by using a cheaper BMS. Lithium iron phosphate is a safe technology, unlike some other lithium chemistries, and Adventure King's lithium batteries are doubly safe. Not only are they sealed and safe to use in your vehicle, they've also passed a short circuit test, overcharge test, over temperature test, and a vibration test, so they're ready to be put to use. Some lithium batteries are extremely sensitive to hot and cold temperatures, and they can be damaged or destroyed by trying to use them. Adventure King's batteries though can be charged anywhere from 0 to 50 degrees Celsius and used or discharged anywhere from negative 20 right through to plus 60 degrees Celsius. They use threaded M8 terminals for high power output and easy connection. Measuring it at 330 millimeters long by 162 millimeters wide and 215 millimeters tall, they fit perfectly in an Adventure King's battery box for a lightweight and powerful portable power station. And with 120 amp hours on tap, you could run a camping fridge for five or even six days. Or you can permanently install them in your vehicle for a next level, super powerful setup that barely weighs anything. And for that reason, they're perfect for your full drive, motorhome, caravan, or camper trailer, where you need to be concerned about GVM and GCM limits. So if you want a safe, lightweight, super powerful, and super long lasting lithium battery for your next level setup, you can't beat an Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. Introducing the incredible Adventure King's premium camp oven stove your new best mate for delicious barbecue or campfire cooking and warm, cozy fires whether you're at home in your backyard or at your favorite campsite. Let me show you all the things that I absolutely love about it and I'm sure you're gonna love too. This amazing bit of gear has been designed right here in Australia and it combines a camping stove and a portable barbecue into one. It can run off multiple fuel sources, wood, heat beads, charcoal, briquettes and more. When it's time to cook up a feast, you can fit two large pots or pans on this huge flat cooktop surface that measures in at 520 millimeters long by 300 millimeters wide. That's enough space to cook up a feast for the entire family. And because it runs on wood or heat beads, you can leave the gas bottle behind, one less thing to pack. And when you want a beautiful roaring campfire, use the included hook tool to simply lift the two piece lid off completely and just add in some more firewood. 
The raised enclosed design means you won't risk scorching your grass, your deck, or even your driveway. And you'll be able to use it for a beautiful warm fire at campsites that don't allow open ground fires. Plus, your fire would last longer because you're closer to the heat. Now that's cozy. The enclosed design means it's super efficient and you can make the most of your fuel by directing the heat exactly where you want it. You can even adjust the temperature of your fire by varying the airflow. With these sliding vents on the side, a two-piece removable lid on top and an adjustable flue, you're always in control. Remove the entire lid for an open fire or just this circular inner piece if you need extra heat for cooking, like searing steaks to finish them off. And this up here, now that is a real game changer. A chimney that extends over 2.4 meters off the ground to direct smoke away from your campsite for smoke-free campfires. You can even position the premium camp oven stove under your awning, your gazebo, or your shed for maximum warmth. And the angular offset chimney piece allows smoke to funnel away rather than getting trapped underneath. There's even a spark arrestor on top for good measure. There are so many more things to absolutely love about the King's Premium Camp Oven Stove. It's been designed to be super sturdy with these four large legs that extend the footprint a foot wider in both directions for excellent stability. The legs simply screw into the bottom like this and you can remove the middle piece for a lower fire. This huge access door swings open with the included hook tool to allow you to easily refill the Premium Camp Oven Stove as required. Inside, you've got this fuel rack that keeps your wood or your charcoal up off the floor, maximizing airflow and preventing wasted heat. It's a breeze to transport, set up and pack down too, with no tools required. Each of the four two-piece legs simply screw together and the chimney pieces pack into each other, with everything fitting into the main body of the premium camp oven stove for simple transport. Make sure you don't miss the incredible genuine cooking accessories available too, like a proper wood-fired meat smoker and a clever barbecue hot plate set to really take your camp cooking to the next level. And a stainless steel water boiler too. Whether I'm at home in my backyard or out camping with family, my mates, or even by myself, I absolutely love my Adventure Kings premium camp oven stove. It's a portable fire pit, it's a wood or charcoal barbecue, and it's the centerpiece of every backyard get together or camping adventure, and I know you're gonna love yours too. Introducing the insane new Adventure Kings nine inch lethal LED driving lights. These things have an amazing combination of both spot and flood light. They have 21,840 lab proven effective lumens per pair. That's over 2,000 more than the previous generation. Plus they have huge light distance performance with one lux at over 1.3 kilometers. These are the LED driving lights that other lights wish they were. You asked and we listened. You said you wanted even more flood of light out of your LED driving lights to light up the sides of the road, the highway, and the tracks. We went back to the drawing board to redesign the lethal LED driving lights to produce exactly that. At the same time, we upgraded the lights to the ridiculously tough King's laser light die cast aluminium housings and three millimeter folded steel mounts. So not only are these some of the brightest LED driving lights we've ever sold, but they're also the toughest. How bright? Try a lab-proven 21,840 lumens per pair and one lux of 1,342 meters. That's real-world lumens too, not the theoretical lumens that some lights claim they produce. That's thanks to the genuine German-designed Osram LEDs for simply unparalleled light performance. We've also re-engineered the lethal lights with a new 5,185 Kelvin color temperature. That means they're just a little bit more on the softer, warmer side. Still a clear, crisp white light, but that little bit easier on the eyes when driving long distances. And of course, you get all the features and quality you'd expect from Adventure King's driving lights, like polycarbonate lenses, the same stuff riot shields and fighter jet canopies are made of, and an IP68 water and dustproof rating, meaning these lights are waterproof to a depth of a metre for an hour. Plus, for the first time ever, they're rated to IP69K. That means they can withstand high pressure jets of hot water. That tough die cast alloy housing features passive cooling fins and a waterproof breather for longevity. And they have the ability to run on both 12 and 24 volt, meaning they're suitable for everything from cars and four wheel drives to trucks and machinery. 
including the brackets they measure 250 millimeters high 230 millimeters wide and 115 millimeters deep they have an attachment system that uses two 8mm bolts on either side to positively lock them in place and prevent them from falling out of alignment. And of course, they use the same plug as all previous Adventure King's lights, which makes them an easy 10 minute upgrade. Just unplug your old lights, bolt the new ones on, plug them in and you're ready to go. Add in a two year warranty and you've got a simply incredible set of lights that leave the competition looking a little underwhelming. The Adventure King's 9-inch lethal LED driving lights are the best value LED driving lights on the market. We've re-engineered them to be incredibly tough and incredibly bright. They'll turn night into day and they're on sale right now for a price you have to see to believe. You asked and we've listened. The incredible MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer has just received an ATM upgrade to two tonnes. All new Adventure Kings MT1 camper trails will now come with the new upgraded two ton ATM. But don't worry if you already own an MT1 because a retrofit upgrade kit is available too. The MT1 is already an ultra tough trailer with a one piece 150 by 50 mil chassis that extends right from the drawbar all the way to the back of the trailer. Now it's even tougher with upgraded suspension, bearings, brakes and wheels to bring it up to a two ton ATM. The brakes are upgraded from 10 inch to 12 inch electric brakes. The alloy rims are now rated to two ton ATM and an upgraded set of suspension arms also suit the upgraded ATM. And for existing owners, the retrofit upgrade is incredibly easy to do at home yourself. Everything just bolts onto the trailer with no modifications needed. That extra payload capacity means that you've got more ability than ever before to carry the gear that you need and still remain legal. For more information and full detailed specs on the MT1, see the Four Wheel Drive Supercenter website. Now with a two ton ATM upgrade, the Adventure Kings MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer can carry more gear than ever before.